that match with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens uh, for the undisputed tag team championship versus Dominic Mysterio and Damian Priest. That match was fire. That match was fire. That Dominic had the curl all riled up when he was about to go for the six one nine. Uh, Liv Morgan came down there and got her revenge back for Raquel Gonzalez. Uh, uh, Rhea Ripley injured her earlier when she kicked her, I think, in the knee or the leg. So she clotheslined her and knocked her over the rail during the match. I mean, that was a crucial moment, too, because Rhea just threw Kevin Owens into the steps behind the ref's back. Not that long left before that. So that was a crucial moment that Liv came down there and helped them. Then um, Kevin Owens was on fire with the clotheslines there, the clotheslines there at the same time. Outside the ring, the Eddie Guerrero homage when he did the frog slash. I think that was the Dominic outside the ring. Uh, Damian Priest, that clothesline, I mean, that choke slam. Who did he do that to? I don't know if that was Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn. Probably Sammy on the outside of the ring. Bro, that bitch was fire, bro. Damian Priest is a star. He literally showed the world he can hold his own with all of them. Damian Priest is a star, bro. That was a great main event. That was a great main event. Finn Balor attacked Seth Rollins before, uh, before that. He should have been there for them. I think he came down to the ring with them, but Probably got thrown out of some cheap bullshit or some shit. Who knows? But, uh, so Rhea Ripley basically had double duty yesterday. You had the interaction with that spark, with that fight with Raquel uh, Gonzalez. Then you was there for your judgment, they members. And then um, Liv Morgan interfered. So you have beef between both of them eventually. I like it. And people was like, oh, this is kind of the same with Sasha Banks and Naomi went through. To me, the way it was said on the paper, this is different to me. But then they kind of pimped them out too because they had them lose their tag team titles. But if you're going to be selling the injury, which low-key sells Raquel Gonzalez's story down the road, it really ain't that bad, bro. You're trying to build people name up. Liv Morgan at first didn't have no name. She was all look with just potential. Now she's a former heavyweight champion, tag champion, probably multiple times. You're a, you're a regular established uh, wrestler now. Even if you ain't even a job, you still at worst like a mid carter or some shit for the division, especially when you count in the overall totality when you count in your tag team work too. You're at worst as a mid carter now. We needed new faces, especially when Sasha and Naomi left. That was perfect. Shout out to Naomi for winning the Impact uh, World Championship against uh, Denzel Rapunzel, whatever the fuck her name. Who gives a fuck? Little girl that y'all be hyping up talking about she thinks, huh? Then um, shout out to Leo Rush, won the Impact X Championship, whatever the fuck that's about. But I'm happy he did it. Damn it, shout out to Leo Rush. So him and Nia J- I mean uh, Naomi and Impact Wrestling, not bad, not bad, not bad. Well, Trinity Star that is, not Naomi, FKA Trinity Star. But uh, that main event was fire, bro. It proved Damian Priest belong as a top guy. Whenever he's ready, he can talk. Got the look, intimidation factor on people. What my uncle said, he got the. His clothes are kind of expired by Razor Ramon with the drip, but also Undertaker with the. Like, I like when he was wearing that purple shirt. That shit was hard, bro. He looked like some mafia big time, like, I don't know, like some vampire boss-esque looking nigga or some shit. That look was hard, bro. But he fit perfectly with them, with the real, all of that. And I like heel Finn. He sat down just to have a talk with himself, just to sneak attack him and whoop his ass. <laughs> I hope he keep on whooping him, bro. Y'all crying about uh Dominic Mysterio getting the title shot tonight. Or NXT against Wes Lee. But damn it, didn't Solo Sokoa get a title shot when he was in the bloodline? And didn't he win the motherfucker against a bigger established wrestler at the time, Carmelo Hayes? Man, y'all can let this shit play out sometimes, bruh. Shit, it is what the fuck it is. I mean, we ain't controlling how this shit get laid out. No way. You either watch it, you like it, or you don't. You can give opinions on how things can be different, but it still ain't gonna change shit. So, what the fuck? 
Dominic Mysterio think he a thug with his cowboy boots. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Dirty Dom. Damn, Dom. They showed your whole reaction when uh mommy was getting attacked, nigga. You look like, I mean, you tried to get back to work, but then day you lost focus like a motherfucker for a second. And Dom, your frog splash that got better. You giving more of yourself to it. At first, you kind of half-assed it. It was more like a crab splash. It's like you wasn't extending. You extended more tonight. Proud of you on that. Then you need to get you some more signature move sets too, still for your character. Because until people know your full arsenal, you will you'll be like an upper mid mid card. If you want to get that next level, break out the moves a little bit. That's really what separate LA Knight to me. Talk good, cool look, but. What was your moves? What was your moves? Finisher. Mm -hmm. Finisher's still not all that to me. It's like a, what the fuck, a face plant. Like the lock, the way he locks into it is almost like a stunner, but it's like a face plant. I don't fucking know. This shit's kind of weird. I mean, whatever, whatever. I ain't trying to, like I said, I ain't trying to bury nobody. So Seth, more than likely, you finna have a worried boy title shot probably down the road with Finn. And Rhea Ripley said that there are going to be two world heavyweight champions in the Judgment Day, Finn and Damien. So I don't know how that's going to play out because Damien, he got the briefcase. And he and he still looked like he was going for the tag team goal tonight. But at the end of the day, it's clear what Finn's after. So I don't know how that's going to play out. Are y'all going to fall out or I don't know how that's going to play out. But they've been teasing it for a little minute. But I hope they don't damn break up, though. Need some solid factions. And when the hell is the WWE ever going to give up on the Viking Raiders? No one cares, bro. Fuck the Viking Raiders. They decent, but still, no one cares. Fuck the Viking Raiders. Fuck Valhalla Reed. We don't care. She put somebody through a table. I don't know who it was, but we don't care. And all you wrestling fans crying, oh, Nikki Cross deserves better. Bruh, the girl was barely on TV. Girl been in catering since 1923. Like, are you fucking kidding me, bruh? Be happy she's even on TV, bruh. I don't care if she got squashed. Irrelevant. Be happy she's even on TV. Her character has nothing to offer no more. Neither character. Not the superhero, not the intensity, fake lunatic bush. That neither character has anything to offer to WWE no more. If y'all thought Natalia didn't have nothing to offer, and that's solid in-ring work and prestige every time you see her, trust me, fucking Nikki Cross has nothing to offer. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. I like how Liv Morgan does starting to be like a stick up to bad guys-ish. Like, she already pretty much probably over with the kids, but she'll probably tap into a bigger audience. She gonna get there, bro. She willing to adapt and adjust. She's like a taste. I can't say attitude there, but a taste. Like Sasha Banks wasn't there. Like nobody threw what was that milk or some shit. Liv had in her face and all that little shit. She'll do a little bit to be eye candy. Like the shorts she wore tonight. Whoop de whoop. She'll do a little bit to get over as well. Not just in ring. A lot of the today's wrestlers, they not doing all that. They don't really give a fuck about appeal. Like Bianca might wear something in a certain way, but majority of them, they don't care to actually draw appeal to themselves for some odd ass reason. I don't understand why, because then you'll be getting over in two ways. You're getting over in the way that you wrestle, perform, and you get over the way you look too. But I guess the girls today, they don't want to get over with the way they look. It's just all entering, 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 so whatever. And then they talking about some thank you, Becky, because she took the mask off and attacked Trish. Man, get the hell out of here, bro. Fuck Becky. The fuck Team Trish all day, bro. And where the fuck was Zoe Starks at? Zoe Starks sound like a battery that needs to be charged. Just plug in the Z pack with the Z charger and <laughs> damn it, Zoe Starks. <laughs> sound like a battery pack that needs to be charged. The fuck? Where was your antennas when the business was stealing my shit? The fuck? Where was they? The hell? Raw be cool though, bruh. It just really, it just shows though. They need a good booking, a little bit better booking, and a fucking world champion. That's all they needed though. It didn't matter what the title looked like. Didn't matter who the world champion was. 
to me, we all had these big back and forths about it. Should it be this guy? It shouldn't be this guy. It shouldn't be. It didn't even matter. They just needed enough to fill out the show and to have a title on the show, to make the show feel legitimized. Having a world champion on each show, that should be something that happens, though. No disrespect to Roman Reigns. It should be something that, that happens. And with you having five kids, you will never probably be able to have the responsibilities to travel for both shows unless they have them in the same near cities like they do, like say if they was in Orlando, Florida, Monday, then they in fucking Miami Friday for SmackDown. Like if they was doing it like that, then cool. But if they doing it like ah, ah, here to here, yeah, he, they, he, there's no way in hell. He with a wife too at home too. There's no way in hell. Unless you feel me, there's no way in hell. And she's not no ugly woman. So she's not going to be just like, yeah, I'm just going to sit here and just wait on you, Roman. He knows he has to be there too. He has commitments at home, just like he has commitments in the WWE. Shit, a little, shit, 50% of them, shit, better than shit. What the fuck would be giving with everybody else? Y'all got to realize the slow, the bloodline storyline is like the biggest storyline probably. Like since the NWO, it was bigger than evolution. That shit really wasn't no storyline. A bunch of niggas thrown together who was power hungry by the boss's daughters, by the boss's daughter's husband. Like, like, come on, bro. Leading the charge. Like, come on, bro. Anybody could have done that shit, bro. With Triple H's size too, plus with the authority figure, plus with Ric Flair's ties into the company. Didn't he, like, halfway run the company, too, at one point when he was going through that power struggle with Vince in the early 2000s? Come on, bro. You're dealing with the power of the power, niggas. Pat Batista, pure power. Randy Orton eventually had so much power. Like, third-gen superstar. Like, get the fuck out of here, bro. It's a power-hungry faction. Yes, Roman Reigns had the power, but the Usos wasn't just running around power struck. Solo wasn't just running around power struck. All that came behind the backs of Roman. <clears throat> It's the truth, and I ain't just hyping them. It's the fucking truth. It's the truth, because there was a great fact, great tag team before they got in the bloodline, but they never felt dominant. It was dominant now. They was dominant on the mic, but as far as stature and the way you see them, pay-per-view, yada, yada, boop to boop, all that happened during the bloodline, bro. Shit, they was barely even getting on cards sometimes. No bullshit, bro. They will open up the WrestleManias. They wouldn't even be on the fucking actual card. They'll be the opening acts, bro. I ain't bullshitting. So I am, I'm proud of them. And I'm proud that they established regardless. Though, I'm just, I'm proud of them though. Regardless, they, the Usos always deserve better than that. And shout out to your boy, Rich. I can't wrestle for shit without injuring somebody hollering. I've been meaning to get on him for a little second, bro. This motherfucker just injured pretty deadly. This motherfucker injured Big E. And it's with the same weak ass belly to belly. Can somebody ban this motherfucker from wrestling? Ban him from doing moves? Something, bro. That man need to get fired. He ain't worth the hassle of keeping when you look about all the things, all the people that he had injured. Once he injured Big E, Big E could have got you money. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Once you injure Big E, that would have been it for me, bro. Fuck it. I would have fired your ass. Shame is talking about her. He's safe and smooth in the ring. Yeah, because he's your partner, fucker. You're not going against him. The other wrestlers are. Man, fuck him. Fire Ridge Holland. I'm out.